Hello again, welcome to part 8 of my platformer tutorial series. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at checkpoints, where you can respawn back at the last checkpoint you have touched. Now we're going to make a new object, I'm going to make a sprite, we're just going to call this checkpoints. I'm going to add an animation to it, and I'm just going to add a sprite. Let's go to where I saved these. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's make it a flag. So we're going to make it a blue hanging flag and we're going to make it so that the flag is hanging when the checkpoint is not checked but then when the checkpoint is checked it is then not hanging anymore. So we're going to add a second animation and this one is going to be the normal flag. We're going to click apply. So this is our checkpoint. So we're go then going to go on to our game events. I'm going to make a new group and I'm going to call this checkpoint. So we're going to make an event and we're going to make it have a variable called checkpoints. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a collision. And I'm going to see if the player is in collision with the checkpoint. If the player is in collision with the checkpoint, then we change the scene variable, which we'll just call checkpoint x for the x axis. We're going to set it equal to our name of the object, which I'm pretty sure is a capital C, so that's checkpoint.x. need to do brackets at the end of it as well because that is a function. And we're also going to do this for y as well, let me just check that it is a, yeah it is. So we're also going to do this for y, so we can just copy and paste it, but just change the variable name to y, and change this to Y also. So now we're going to make it so that when the player dies we get back to the checkpoint. So for this we're going to go into the enemy group and we're going to do it so when we are in collision with the enemy. So we're going to get rid of this and we're instead going to do it with changing the position. Change the position of player. We're going to set it to the variable and then the variable we created that needs to be a capital V you, you can also just check here and variables and then value of a scene variable and then the variable um, and I'll just do that or you can just type it in like I am here so now we're going to do the Y checkpoints Y so now you can click OK, and so when the player is in collision with the enemy and the player is on the floor, it will change the position of player to where the checkpoint is. But we still haven't put the checkpoint on the ground, so we're going to put it on the ground, let's say, here. So now if we play it, and we get hit by the slime. I didn't get hit by the slime. <laughs> Whoops. There you go. So you can see it doesn't work like completely properly, does it? So to try and fix the problem that we have with the player spawning all the way over on the weird side of whatever it spawned on, we're going to go into here and we're simply just going to subtract the player dot height. from, there's a bracket there, from the checkpoint, this needs to be capital C checkpoint dot height, then close the brackets, 
and now it should work because what we're doing here is we're getting the player height we're subtracting the checkpoint height from the player height and then subtracting all of that from the position of the checkpoint so if we click play okay I must have killed him there we go we are spawning back at the checkpoint so you can see that the checkpoint does work and that we do indeed spawn back at it there you go so currently there is one bad thing in what we've made here and that is that if we put the checkpoint over here so the player doesn't touch it and we die he still does that and that's because we haven't set the starting checkpoint yet and so what we need to do for that is we just need to actually I'm going to put this in the checkpoint one here I'm going to do at the beginning of the scene we're going to set oops <laughs> we're going to set the X and Y for the currently selected ones. If they die without touching any checkpoints then they'll respawn at the first checkpoint because they haven't touched any checkpoints therefore restarting the level. You can also just do this by a predefined point if you want. And that's pretty much it. So there is one more thing and that's to change the animation of the checkpoints. You know we can just do this animation change the animation of checkpoint set it to one not to one press ok and then whenever we go over the checkpoint it will be an indicator that that is our checkpoint and that when we die we will respawn to it and that's quite easy so let's just test that this works with a second checkpoint We go over this one, you see that the second checkpoint has not changed its animation and if we die it goes back to the first checkpoint but if we then go on the second checkpoint, hopefully without killing this slime, okay, you see that that does uh, go up and so if I actually make this over here so we can avoid this one, you see that one changes, we can jump over this and get killed by the slime go by that checkpoint if we actually go on this one get killed by the slime we go to the latest one that's it for checkpoints and of course if you get to the end then well done you've gone back to the menu that we made earlier so that is checkpoints nice and easy I hope you enjoyed this do the usual whatever if you want to see more and have a great day.